is it's the Queen's Plate, Matt, a mile and a quarter on their top of a track. And we have an interesting field and a full field, Matt. 16 horses. I think either way we look at this race or, or, or try to analyze this race, we're going to start with one of two races. Either the Woodbine Oaks or the Plate Trial would serve as the most key race for this year's Queen's Plate. Let's start with the Woodbine Oaks, Matt. Dixie Moon and Wonder Godot ran 1-2 all by them lonesome. At <laughs> they were all by themselves down the lane late, but Dixie Moon held off Wonder Godot in the Woodbine Oaks. Yeah, and like you said, the Queen's Plate, 16 horses in the field, and, and it is such an interesting mix of horses. Uh, the the restricted, the Canadian bred nature of that race just just gives you a bunch of horses that coming from all over the place with so many different uh, angles in their post positions. But yeah, it was the it was the Woodbine Oaks um, and those two horses. The Phillies have done well in the Queen's Plate historically. Thirty six times the Phillies have won the race. And that includes last year, Brian, when Holly Helena won the race, coming out of a victory in the Woodbine Oaks. That's right, Matt. And we saw two very good candidates uh, listed as the second and third choice. Uh, well, let's start with Wonder Godot. Wonder Godot was a, uh, an impressive two-time stakes winner at two last year. She's actually 0 for 6 this year. It sounds bad, but... Five of those six losses were by less than a length. She's finished no worse than third. She's finished second four times this year. She ran a very big Kentucky Oaks to give Monomoy Girl everything she wanted. Now she's back on the top of the... And honestly, if we're looking at this Woodbine Oaks, Matt, Dixie Moon had clearly the better trip. Wonder Godot was squeezed back at the start, had the wider go, and was slowly but surely gaining on Dixie Moon for most of the stretch. Yeah, that's one of the the really fascinating things about this race. If you, if you look at the past performances and you uh, look at Wonder Godot in there, all you see are Grade One and Grade Two races um, against the very very best fillies in open company in our country. And y you know, when I went through it, I said to myself, "Is this the time that uh, Wonder Godot is finally gonna?" breakthrough and get a big victory um it seems like uh she's getting some class relief in here compared to a lot of the ones in the field who have been running in restricted company against just canadian breads um on the one hand i feel that way and, and then on the other hand you just see those second places uh piling up including the woodbine oaks i know there was a difference in the trips um, Midnight Bazoo has ha already, you know, had a lot of tough competitive races in here. She always seems to bounce back. So for me, uh, she's a really big question mark. I'd love to see her get a victory. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, Matt, I think this is a good spot. She, she obviously likes Woodbine. She's done well before here. And that Woodbine Oaks, if, if, all things considered, you, you'd have to call her best in there. The mile and a quarter of the Queen's Plate uh, should only help her, especially if we're comparing her to the other two favorites. It seems like a mile and a quarter would suit her not only in running style, but she should be able to handle the distance with those those hard races at two turns under the book. Don't forget last year at the Demoiselle of Nine Furlongs at Aqueduct, she just cantered away from the rest. And, and uh, you know, of the two Phillies, we're talking Woodbine Oaks. I think she looks like the one that wants a mile and a quarter, a little bit more than Dixie Moon, taking nothing away from Dixie Moon. Obviously a nice filly. She did fail, though, in a couple of her toughest tests, which came on the turf. Not sure if she's better on turf or the synthetic surface at Woodbine, but Dixie Moon clearly has done well over this synthetic surface. So certainly a threat. I think she'll be buying for third choice in here, though, because I think Wonder Godot is the filly from the Woodbine Oaks that most will prefer, including myself. Uh, it would be nice to see her breakthrough. What a breakthrough this would be, first win of the year after six tough defeats to win it in the Queen's Plate, but certainly Wonder Godot has a big shot. Matt, let's look at that plate trial, though, the other big race from June 9 at Woodbine. And there we had Telekinesis, uh, who's been really talked about long before he ever ran. 
uh, Stone Street runner from Mark Cassie. Mark Cassie wanted this horse, wanted to buy this horse uh, early on, and, and Stone Street got him, who's, a, who's one of the uh, many clients from Mark Cassie. So Mark Cassie ended up getting him in his barn. We've heard stories of his talent from before he ever ran, and he really hasn't disappointed. Uh, impressive maiden win that he ran against good older horses only in his second start. Kind of like Justify, where uh, uh, he didn't begin his career, career until February of his three-year-old year, but he's done a lot in four starts. Big second in the Lexington Stakes here in Kentucky when my boy Jack just nipped him out the wire. And then the play trial was kind of a, a facile victory over Rose's vision and a few others uh, that are running in the Queen's Plate. Yes, certainly telekinesis is a horse that has been highly regarded, was a big, like, about $450,000 uh, weanling purpose, has been uh, uh, favored at the betting windows every time the horse has run. Um, a lot of talent in there. Like you said when you were talking about Wonder Godot, um, I think I've got some questions about the 10 furlong distance in here with the horse, but um, the horse is a big talent for sure. He's a big talent, Matt, and I, and I really do wonder. He gives me the impression of a horse that we might not have seen the very best from. Now, often that, that never... Uh, Never comes to fruition and horses that look so talented never kind of go beyond a certain level so telekinesis i think is uh this is a turning point in his young career four races in uh he's a stakes winner uh like i said my boy jack just got his measure in the lexington stakes but uh if he's waiting to really pop and the queen's plate was the spot uh, that uh, Mark Cassie was kind of gearing him up for. We could see a big performance in here. Having said that, Matt, there is a fair amount of pace, 16 horses, and uh, definitely no shortage of speed in here. Telekinesis and probably Dixie Moon as well are two that should be on or near the lead in here, uh, which could set something up for a horse who comes from farther behind. One of the horses that I might want to look at a little bit should be a real long shot, although... Maybe with the name, he gets a little bit more plays ahead by a century. Uh, a, uh, a, and if you're familiar with Canadian rock music, of course, you, you, you know the, the, the hip uh, as, they're, as they're known. So ahead by a century, named after that song, didn't run his best race when third in the play trial, but I think he might be a 10 furlong horse. And then Rose's Vision, who, who made telekinesis work in that play trial, if he moves forward a little bit too, both of them should at least be considered here at 10 furlongs for the Queen's play. Yeah, Brian. And, you know, as we went through our discussion of telekinesis and Dixie Moon and Wonder Godot, we clearly have questions about all three of those horses. And we're and when we're talking about a 16-horse field and, and the, the way that it's made up in the Queen's play, for me, this is a race where uh, I, I, I'm going to be looking to play some horses that aren't those favorites, and I've got a couple that I also like in there, Brian. This is not typical uh, uh, kind of stuff that you hear from me on the show, but I like Al Alternative Root a little bit, who's 30-1 to 1 on the morning line. For Al Stahl, I like the way he prepped this horse for the Queen's Plate. To me, it seems like Stahl has had his eye on this race for this horse all along. Um, when he sent him to win a uh, race on the artificial surface at Turfway Park. Um, and then, then he ran on the turf in, uh, at Arlington Park when the turf was just a complete bog. Um, and as a draw line through it race... I find that horse a little bit interesting at 31. I also like the Graham motion runner strike me down, Brian, as another one. I like Graham motion when he's at big odds, and I think we'll get a good price on this one. Motion sent the horse up to Woodbine to break his maiden on the, on the, on the tapita surface, and then came back to Monmouth where on, on the turf in the tail of the cat, this horse ran a good race and finished second. To me, this is a horse that is getting better. His speed figures have improved in every start. And I have a feeling that the tap at a surface might be his best. So 
there's a couple long shots from me that I would like to play in the Queen's Plate. All right, Matt. Well, let's start with Strike Me Down. Strike Me Down, of course, is a Samson homebred, and Samson has been a dominant force in Canadian racing and the Queen's Plate for a long time now. This is a son of Tappet out of a really, really nice mare named Strike Softly, who is a bit of a turf monster up in Canada. So this horse is bred to be a champion. Strike Me Down, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Matt, Graham Motion uh, and, and, and Ortiz coming in, I, I think that uh, you're going to be a little disappointed with those odds. I have him more in the four to five to one range. I think he'll actually be uh, uh, vying for third choice with Dixie Moon in here. Having said that, I like him too. I like him a lot. I think uh, I think a mile and a quarter should be up his alley. Although it, a little hard to tell from his last race because he uh, he was bottled up a little bit in that tail of the cat stakes stakes at Monmouth Park last time, and uh, he made a real burst of speed to uh, look like a sure winner uh, as the uh, field turned for home and then was run down late. Uh, having said that, they were way ahead of the rest, so it was still an interesting looking race. And obviously a horse of talent. He's done well at Woodbine before. Uh, he was second in his second race of his life to Dixie Moon on the top of So uh, strike me down. Certainly a horse to watch out for. I'm not as quite with you on alternative route. Uh, uh, I think ahead by a century is, is my bomb in here over alternative route. But I could certainly see why you like him a little bit. I just worry that those... Rush away and Arlington Classic races were uh, quite a bit uh, cheaper than maybe even normally they are. So I don't know what he beat in there, but an interesting horse uh, to say the least. Matt, it, it's a it's a very tough race to pick. Actually, I think Telekinesis probably is favored slightly over Wonder Godot. If I had to pick a horse who wins this race by daylight, I think Telekinesis might be ready to really throw in a big one. If I had to pick a horse most likely to run a good race and to be in the money, it's probably Wonder Godot, as consistent and classy as she is, and I think 10 furlongs again helps her. But if I had to pick just a winner, I, I think the Grand Motion horse makes a lot of sense for everything you mentioned. 10 furlongs, the surface, and clearly he's uh, building up to this race with those two races he's run this year. So if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to say strike me down. 10 to 1 on the morning line will not happen, though. Yeah, that, that, that probably makes sense. But still keeping in mind that um, it is a 16-horse field. And if you want to use a horse like Strike Me Down in the exactas or in the trifectas with some of the other horses that we've mentioned, your, your bomb, my bomb, and some of the more favorite horses, you'll, that'll help you get some better value. Absolutely. And five to one in a 16 horse race, Matt is exactly right. That's not bad, especially if you can hook them up. So that's the queen's plate. Matt, who, who is your, who is your top pick? You, you like strike me down as a top pick or you think one of the favorites is still the one to beat? Yeah, no, I, I, I taking in everything we said, um, I, I can't pick out one of the three favorites as a top choice. i would go with strike me down. Strike me down. Okay. And again, don't be surprised if Strike Me Down is even lower than Dixie Moon. I think Dixie Moon might offer some value, although she's not one of my top three in here because I think she will be uh, let go a little bit off that uh, Woodbine Oaks win. 